we go. <clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? How we doing? Oh, wait, my, my webcam isn't there. Oh, that's why. Hold on. How about now? Boom. I got covered up by the death logo. You know what we need? We need better better LED coverage here. Hold up. Let's get a good good color going. I'm always a blue guy. Let's try blue out. How's that looking? I mean better. It's still not ideal. I hate RGB LEDs. I hate having to switch between uh, a million different remotes. Yes, it would be nice if I bought them all in the same ecosystem and it would cost me so much more. Okay. Turn that down. I think we're cool. Cat Miner 369. What's up, dude? How you doing? Here to help you ponder the universe, brother. That's what I need, man. I don't know help I can get. Alex Guy 89. We still got to set up that interview. Oh, fuck yeah. That'd be fun as hell, dude. I'd be mega down for that. Let me start the game up and then make sure my audio levels are right. I think the stream's good. That's very rare for me. I'm sure I missed something. There has to be something fucked up here, but we'll find out. Sierra Cobalt says, actually around to make one of these live. Oh, are you new? Because that's a new name for me, but maybe. Well, either way, what's up? How you doing? I have this little like thing with hearts on my OBS, and I don't know what it does. If I click it, will it show up on... Hold on, let's see. Uh, it says action can't be performed inside Streamlabs. Damn. Yeah, they won't let me interact with chat in Streamlabs OBS. I don't know why. Okay, so audio levels. What are we thinking? Mic, good, bad? I'm going to start the game up also. That will help. Okay. We should be moving. Got our controller. Ooh, that's loud. Maybe right there. Something like that. And I take you and do that. How does that sound? I say that's good. <clears throat> Okay, we're in, I think. I'm appreciating the new J-pop version of the welcome to the new stream message. Oh yeah, it's from, um, fuck, what's his face? Mono Memory, that's it. I forgot his name. Hold up. I think that might be better. Yeah, there we go. Alex Shadow, how you doing, man? Whenever whales beach themselves is how I think aliens view people whenever they're in space. I'm like, dude, you're not supposed to be here. That's a genuinely kind of deep thought. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm still getting over being sick, so I apologize if I'm a little... This. Uh, what is this game? So You Will Die Here Tonight is an indie game. It is sort of... You could think of it as... Uh, Resident Evil Gaiden, if the people making it were really good at what they were doing. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. Uh, what do you guys think, though, sound-wise? Can you hear the sound, like the music of the game and my voice? Are they, like, leveled out? I get really paranoid for some reason that I'll be, you know, like 10 minutes into a massive rant, and then people will be like, I couldn't hear a word you just said. <laughs> Interested in Jared's interest in Lethal Company. Lethal Company? What are we talking about? In Lethal Company. Do I have an interest in Lethal? Is that a thing for me? Oh shit, by the way. So the only way... Okay, you can hear the sound. That's all that matters if there's sound. Oh shit, MD Chaos. I just watched one of your videos a second ago. Um, Yeah, so it's an indie game. It is very, very much like Resident Evil Gaiden. Sort of. It's, it's actually kind of hard to explain. Okay, so... Alright, yeah, 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 we're good. Mondo Cool says sound ratio is good. Thank you, Mondo Cool. Oh, yeah, man. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is it's a brand new day. Uh, it's a brand new... 
job that we're showing up for here in the Aries building. And Aries is like your star's analog. Everything in here is a some sort of an homage to Resident Evil or some other like horror franchise or something. It's very good. The 2D art is really cool. No way someone made a game like RE Gaiden. Kind of respect. It, it, honestly, so when I was playing Resident Evil Gaiden, I continually heard um, in my head a voice saying, this is like so close to being good. It is so just right there. And I think Spiral Bound, the developer who made this game, 100% sort of like latched on to that fucking nail him so yeah when you get into combat it's like this it's a first person kind of deal and you can aim uh, manually as opposed to you know Resident Evil Gaiden but getting grabbed by a zombie and, and being taken into like a first person zombie fighting thing. It's just like, it's literally only Ari Gaiden. Fucking knock him out. Punch that fool. And then you can escape. There we go. Been a long time since you've been around. Well, I appreciate you being around. How about that? Feels like a game made in the 90s. It does. Look at the sprites. So they're pre-rendered uh, character models. So what they do is they take a computer, they render out a CG model, and then um, they take that model, digitize it, and kind of bit crush it. So you you take resolution away. So you you know take it into into Photoshop and shrink it down to like a quarter resolution, and then blow it back up again. You get this kind of pixelated look. So they're pre-rendering out every single animation frame, which gives it this. It, it's almost like I want to say choppy, but it's not necessarily choppy. It's just uh, framey, I guess is the word. You can see and, and be aware of the, the delineations between each frame, which is a very, like, you know, 2D retro kind of deal. He took away half of my HP with the fucking bite. Combat involves first-person shooting. That kind of reminds me a lot of D2. Oh, yep, there you go. This is a little more like RE Gaiden than D2 in the sense um, it's very... Uh, D2 is a little more kind of open world, open exploration, where this is more survival, very constrained exploration, a lot of backtracking and stuff. Although D2 had a lot of backtracking as well. Resident Evil pretty much has a monopoly on zombie games and man-made monsters. I mean, it'd be nice if somebody else would step up to the plate and, you know what I mean, pose a, a, a sort of challenge to them on the front, but uh, we haven't seen it. Outside of the indie scene, of course. This is our Barry Burton stand-in. This looks a little like Signalis, um, not the specific art style, but the art direction in terms of environment and pers oh, perspective for sure, yeah. This is very similar to Signalis in the sense that it takes on a very, uh, not top-down, but not isometric, kind of in between those two angles type of perspective. And it does stuff like this where it can zoom in on pre-rendered background um, to show emphasis or something. Same way Signalis did it. I love the uh, like the CG item art and stuff in this game. It's so good. Yeah, the character portraits are really nice. Um, I would say that there are some character portraits that... No, you know what? Actually, now that I think about it. No, yeah, they're all great. <laughs> I would say the inventory is good, but it's missing something as far as usability. Like, I think it looks good, 
but it looks like an item screen. It doesn't look like a like a Resident Evil style inventory where you have a your you know your picture of your character and then your health and all the items you have. This is kind of set up more for utility or not for utility, just kind of like I mean really and truly you're only going in here for your map. I never mess with any display options. I wonder if there's anything good here. Lock cursor. No. Okay. Have you tried the Resident Evil Medieval demo yet? I have not, but it looks great. And that guy always makes good shit, so. This is one thing I always appreciate as far as sound design goes. We're standing in his office, but we can sort of hear the city outside. And Parasite Eve does that a lot. I really appreciate when a game does a lot sound-wise to put you in the mood. <clears throat> Dead Meme says, I didn't know you did live streams. That uh, that shows you how often I keep up with this, huh? <laughs> Dead Memes could have been subscribed for like two years and still statistically could have not stumbled across my live streams because I do them so rarely. I'm going to try to do them more often, though. This is a really good scene, nice and quiet. All you can hear is the footsteps. And just immediately, shenanigans. Oh wait, hold on. Douglas Black has got some information here. <laughs> Douglas Black says, um, "Re, but if aliens see us, us in space, how could they disapprove of us being in space? Because they are in space too. They'd be hypocrites." I think the point was is that we don't deserve to be in space because we're humans. Oh, would you look at that? My wife is calling me. Joe Senior live to the entire world. Hello. Say hi to everybody. Who's everybody? Oh, are you streaming? Yeah, I'm streaming right now, yeah. Oh, my bad. It's a good thing you didn't say anything incredibly offensive. Oh, well, I could have, for sure. I just wanted to send you a cute picture of Zevron. Okay, we'll do that real quick, and... Uh, I'll show it to everybody on stream. How about that? As a kitty? Yeah. No, you should not. All right, fine. All right, let me talk to you a little bit later, right? I love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Do you plan covering this game on video? Yes, actually. I'm voicing a script for it today. And I just found out a previous build of it, which is going to lengthen the video a little bit, which is always what happens. I always, in the like finishing things up phase, I always find something that's gonna lengthen the video. Which is how it works for me, because I'm a dummy. Now I'll tell you if there's one thing this game does really well, and there is, there's a lot of stuff this game does really well, but this note right here, this is like the first thing that we see after all this goes down, and this is such a good message. I love that, it's short, the the extra space on the page is so profoundly like cripplingly i don't know depressing like this is so utilitarian it's just a very short two sentences and it describes the entirety of this video game's mechanics how cool is that hills of silence says hey jared hope things have been good better i've i've uh gotten over that that sickness i had Oof. I'm feeling better now, and my throat is good, so I can start talking again. Minus relationship points, Joe doesn't have your YouTube channel notifications up. I don't fucking... You know, honestly, she usually does get notified when I do stream, so... But in her defense, she is uh, in South Carolina right now. She's spending time with her family, so she's got other stuff going on. Um, I will, obviously viciously abuse her when she gets back home in retaliation. See, that's even like a Silent Hill thing. Looking at this red light gives me a headache. Like, that's so dope. If pro Jared is a pro, what does that make you? I, you know, amateur Jared. You know what I mean? Maybe up and coming Jared. I'll take that. <laughs> 
Oh, North Carolina. Sorry. Bro, it's North Carolina. I can't believe you just called me bro. Now the abuse will be real. It is no longer a joke. I think it was Code Veronica that had the wolf on the ammo. Did RE2? No, RE2 didn't. Yeah, I think it was Code Veronica that had the wolf on the ammo. Cool, Jared. All right, I'll take that. There you go. Tyler's got it. See, there is no need for them to have rendered out that image. But they did it, and I appreciate the fuck out of it. I bet there are six exact replicas of this mansion, and everyone is trying to escape from theirs. Um... I did not know you could eat that. That's the first time I tried that out. That's kind of cool. <laughs> um... You know what? While we're here, we may as well get some footage, right? There we go. Um, what was I talking about? I forget. Makes him non-pervert, Jared. Well, you know, that's the thing about me. At the very least, if there's one thing you can expect from me versus pro Jared, I'm not going to fuck you. That's, that's the one thing. I will not message you and try to solicit nudes. So if there's, you know, we may offer similar stuff, but if there's one thing I can't give you that he can, it will be a picture of his genitals. <laughs> Yo, what's up, David? That food looks ill, like isn't a compliment, like it's ill-mannered, very bad manners. Is calling you bruh any better? Man, I hate that. Like, just say bro, but pronounce it bruh. Don't spell it bruh, because that makes it lame. See, here's the thing. When we're talking, um, like, what's the word? Slang, I guess. Like, bad words. Fucking, if you spell it out, it makes it, like, real. And you don't want that. These are words that we use replacing words that actually work. So we don't need to make this real. If we're going to use slang for something, allow it to be slang. But don't spell it out and write it down. You know what I mean? I hate that. I don't know why. That bothers the fuck out of me. <laughs> Base cap. See, now there is a message I can get behind. Oh, that's right. I need the arrow. I forgot about that. Remember, I don't know if any of you guys were here on stream when I figured out in real time that no cap meant no capriciousness. That's true. Josine does type out and say bro often. Maybe that's why I don't like it. Did you see the Game of the Year awards show? Um, you know, I was on Twitter when it was being shown, so I basically got the same effect. I don't really watch... Um, video game award shows or you know like big announcements and stuff I, I wait until it kind of disseminates into the public and I find it that way I've been disappointed by so many uh, video game announcements that I no longer like watching the announcements because then you you know you can't help but get caught up in the hype like I did with FF7 Remake I maintained a very uh, critical view of FF7 Remake the entire time until I let myself start getting swept up in the release hype and going to the Square Enix Cafe in Akihabara and like really kind of like purposefully getting into the trailer and then I played it it was fucking depressing like two weeks after I played that game I was sad it was so fucking awful compared to the original and it's like I don't want to watch games get announced anymore because it's just going to lead to that so from now on, when we're streaming, you're not allowed to tell me about video games that come out. <laughs> Solarian has an advo. What is an advo? I assume that that... Wait, I never met a person who ever said bruh. I imagined that only surfers say it. You know, I, I, I think I tend to put a little bit of an ah accent on the bro. I don't say like bro, that's sick. I'm like bruh. But that's like, bruh, fuck. Am I an idiot? I might be an idiot. There's a slight chance. 
I really like this door peeking mechanic, but I will say um, you never, ever have to use it. There's never a reason to use this. Well, like, no, that's not true. There's a section downstairs where you do need to use it, and that's the only place, and it sucks because it's such a cool mechanic. I would have loved to have seen it get a little more love. I don't think I found all the pages when I beat it last time. God, that's really good art. <laughs> I mean, really and truly, this feels to me like the perfect Resident Evil clone. Because it has transplanted all of the uh, lesser emulated elements of Resident Evil. A lot of people, when they make a, a survival horror revival style game... They're not trying to clone the aspects of Resident Evil that they didn't like quite as much. And you know, a lot of people do tend to complain. A survival horror game typically is only going to last like, what, two and a half hours? You know, four on a first playthrough if it's, you know, really difficult or challenging in some kind of way. But You Will Die Here Tonight is, is a very similar kind of thing. You could beat this game fucking immediately. You know, like maybe two hours you could beat this game. But I think the first time you play it, it'll probably be something closer to three and a half. Something, maybe four, you know? And, I don't know, it just feels like it's emulating a lot of the elements of Resident Evil that tend to not make it into these indie-style survival horror revival kind of deals. I really appreciate it. It's really fun when you start covering games like this. Um, because you get to see a lot of like different people's take on a genre that you're just like in love with. So I get to see Spiral Bound Dev's sort of perspective on the matter. Because when we look at things that made it from Resident Evil to this game, it's telling us here's the elements of gameplay that were important to these developers. And here's what they kind of found to be valuable enough to make it into a video game that they were making themselves i don't know it's so dope you get a cool little psychological window into somebody's thought process when they make a video game because you're kind of getting to see their priorities play out in real time can a surf per oh i cannot surf yeah i've never done that before and it honestly kind of looks a little frightening not because I feel like I'd get hurt surfing because I skateboard and that feels probably more dangerous although you can drown while you're surfing it's a complex conversation but um the point is um, I'm afraid that a shark will eat me like I truly am worried that sharks will get me if I surf the only thing I'm sort of excited for uh, from the awards is the Sega remasters. Honestly, I was blown away by that a little bit because they're so bad at um, making video games. They're awful at it. And it's amazing that someone at Sega like pulled someone aside in the elevator is like, hey, you own a lot of franchises that could make a lot of money. You just need to make video games about them. And then Sega was like, but... <laughs> fucking hilarious it's amazing sega's been releasing one sonic game every fucking like four years for the past 20 years and then um, they're they just go oh oh like like golden axe and streets of rage and alex the kid and all these things that we sit on that could be making us money we could just like make stuff out of them this is going to change a little bit for our company i think i was excited by the hellblade stuff you know i never played that game it looks interesting, though. It looks like one of those me and Josine play it together kind of games. I don't know what it is. Me and her usually play, like, action games together, like Mega Man X or stuff like that. Sega kills Yakuza for Shinobi. Is Yakuza continuing to make money? I assume in Japan it is. But I don't really pay attention to the series enough to know. <laughs> Oh, that's the heart. Okay, we have to remember the heart. For a later puzzle. I really like this combat a lot. I thought 
in areas with like a lot of zombies that going in and out of combat would be annoying but it, it it's so snappy you move in and out of of this combat so fast that it doesn't really get a chance to like get on your nerves or anything like that Oh shit, Virtual Fighter X Dead Alive, that'd be sick. I don't play either of those games, to be honest, but I would just like to see that. Okay, let's check the old map Ruski, huh? That's locked. Okay. Yeah, Yakuza is going up to like eight or so with a guide in. It's went on for too long, especially after when they could have ended it with zero or so. You know, it's it's a fucking tough scenario knowing when to fold. You know what I mean? Like you have a series that you probably enjoy making and it makes you money. Oh shit, so I can't get back out there. Interesting. I mean, imagine, for example, let's say this, like when my YouTube channel starts doing really poorly, will I have the good grace to kind of bow out as opposed to just continuing to publicly embarrass myself? You know what I mean? Like, it's a tough ask. Okay, so we've, we've done everything here. I guess we could put that yellow book. Oh, we have the red one, too. Okay, we'll do that. Mega Man Legends. Yes, I liked Legends. It um, took me a while to get used to, to control it, but that was a game that I always use as an example for back in the... Oh, I have them all. I didn't even realize it. Back in the PS1 era, when a game sort of controlled like differently than you were used to, uh, it wasn't this thing where you would sit around and be like, oh, God, these controls are so bad. You would just, like, learn how to play the game, which is why I think so many modern people will comment on my videos talking about how bad tank controls are. And it's because nowadays, and, and this isn't this isn't one of those things were better when I was a kid type of deals. Um, this is a, a genuine sort of objective look at what could potentially culturally be happening. Um, so I think that was sort of a cultural thing. You knew that video games were not this, uh, this single amorphous thing, how they are now. And it's, it's not, that's not necessarily, uh, th that's how things go. As, as you pump more money into an industry, it becomes more, what's the word? God, I'm trying to think of the term here that's going to make sense. Streamlined, I guess, is, is sort of on the way. So as games have started to copy each other's mechanics and popular features as they become more and more popular among gamers, we sort of end up uh, narrowing down the family tree of video games until it's a straight line because every single game that releases now controls almost exactly the same. Every single game that releases now has some sort of open world framework some sort of open world mechanics in its game some sort of like side quest style system some sort of some sort of very simple character progression system experience skills you can learn stuff like that every game that gets released in the AAA space works exactly the same but in the 90s that wasn't the case crash bandicoot could come out and at the same exact time so could castlevania symphony of the night and these were two very radically different video games that served different purposes and controlled differently and we were able to, without an issue, jump between them, no problem. Whereas nowadays, if you pick, a, pick up a game that looks like Fortnite, but doesn't c control like Fortnite does, it's do it will not succeed. And it's because people who play video games now expect that they will be receiving a familiar package that they're used to. I played Call of Duty I'm now going to pick up Battlefield and receive every mechanic, every 
feature, every potential thing I could have gotten out of one game I will get from the other because I interact with them the same way and they give me the same things. Back in the 90s, the goal was not like, oh, okay, this game did well, let's copy it. The goal was, all right, this game did well. How can we shoot ourselves in a different trajectory and somehow get some of that success? I don't know. It was a very different mentality that they approached to making video games back then. And I feel like potentially it could just be biased because I grew up with those games. And I'm obviously going to look back on my childhood with more, you know, positive feelings than negative. But I feel like there truly has been a shift in the way um, people who play video games expect video game developers to produce the products that they interact with. And it seems like people now expect everything that they're going to get will be derivative of everything that they have ever gotten. And they won't necessarily need to learn anything. When was the last time you picked up a modern AAA video game and had to learn how to play it? You know, that sounds like a very tame question. But truly, when was the last time you were playing a PS5 or Xbox Series X game and you had to go, oh, okay, so if I do, all right, if I do this... It's almost a non-issue because every single game does truly, I mean, really and truly, you are either first person or third person over the shoulder, and that is period it as far as AAA goes. And I'm not saying necessarily that I have a better answer or, or something like that, but I am saying it is sort of disappointing to see an industry that had a very kind of like fucking out there Wild West experimental sort of approach to creating video games and it has become instead a very uh <clears throat> controlled process that has been refined down to the very last like little bit of interaction i don't know it's kind of depressing yo well bueno ostrich how you been man Oh shit, Jamie Lee Curtis did that dance real good in True Lies. Never in my life have I found that woman attractive except for in that movie. <laughs> oh, there you go, Hitman. To be fair though, Hitman is sort of a... It's a modern video game, but it comes from a retro lineage. I don't know, maybe that doesn't count. I always loved Blood Money. What a fucking good game that was. Dude, it's too hot in here. Hold up, guys. I gotta open my door. By the way, El Bueno Ostrich, thank you for re-upping 32 months, man. That's fucking... That's dead serious. Thank you. Tor C says, Jared, that was the false idiocy some Japanese companies adopted in the 2010s. I blame Inafune. They think having a Western studio to make a game from a Japanese franchise would give people what they want. It's real. It's so strange because the Japanese approach to making video games was okay. Let's take the Japanese approach to producing video games abroad was so fucking interesting. Like, every Japanese game company literally said, uh, nope, this is how it will be done. It will never be done any differently. We don't care where these games will be sold. You know what I mean? Like, very strange mentality to have. Lost Planet 3. You know, that's one of those games that I, I read so many bad reviews over that I, I was like, God, this is going to be such a bad game. And I played it, and I was like, oh, fuck. It's pretty good, you know? There's nothing wrong with this. I think I watched uh, Yahtzee's review of that. And that's what kind of like led me to believe it was an awful game. Front Mission Evolve, Silent Hill Post SH4, Lost Planet 3, uh, Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. Yaiba could have been good. It looked good, at least. I would have liked to have seen them put the same amount of effort into the mechanics as they did the visuals. 
really good atmosphere in this game. These things are so fucking creepy. Oh fuck, I didn't know there was another one. Shit. Oh, you fucking asshole, I didn't want to die. I wanted to kill him. How do we feel about Dead Space 3? Dead Space 3, honestly, is another one of those games that uh, was so close to being so good. I think the first two hours of Dead Space 3, uh, minus the cool story intro, I actually enjoyed the story intro, but the first three hours of Dead Space 3, as far as gameplay goes, uh, was kind of awful. Maybe two hours, let's say two hours. Until you start customizing your weapons and you can produce like a decent shotgun with some side of uh, some sort of like a stasis side effect or something. Until you start producing like explosives or you could deal with the kind of like fucking insane shit they start to throw at you in that game. It's it's not really that fun. Vampire Rose says, it's been a while since I played a new game that actually blowed my mind. Um, but being a survival horror fan, that's, uh, yeah, exactly. That kind of limits our options in a lot of ways, doesn't it? Grab that fucking ammo, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> okay so what just happened here is our guy our girl I guess Olsen here Dr. Catherine Olsen is a bit of a traitor she's working for whatever shady organization is running some kind of an experiment so that um, Ares it's essentially Resident Evil right she's our Wesker and we just went through the events of Resident Evil found out she was a traitor and at the end, when we died, we just groundhogs stayed back to right here again. And she's blown away that these people don't remember that she essentially got all of them killed. And that's our main story setup, which I really like. You don't necessarily get the full story hook until a little bit in, which is kind of cool. The last game me and a girlfriend played before we broke up was Dead Space 3, so it's the best. That's one way to look at it. I think we could probably beat this on stream today. Let's do it. Wear sunglasses. See, that's the thing. She's smart. She knows she doesn't need them. No special operator is wearing fucking tinted sunglasses on a nighttime mission. That's what should have been a dead giveaway for Wesker from the start. Okay, so you've gotten it sort of backwards, Church. Ares is the star's analog. Umbrella's analog in this game, I don't think has a name. They're just kind of a secret shady organization. Cat Miner says, by the way, Jared, I managed to review three games in 19 minutes. That's not too bad. When I do my... Um, my like RE clone videos or my RPG videos, I usually do like 10 games in an hour. So it's kind of a, a similar ratio, sort of. Hey, come be lad. What's up, dude? How's it hang? It is uh, hanging more vigorously than usual. How about that? Did Wesker wear the glasses because he always had cat eyes? I don't think so. But that's a very good question, actually. I imagine he wore them for the same reason most people wear sunglasses. Because they're cool. 
Jonathan Ramos got his very first PS5. Hey, there you go. Me and my wife had to watch a Twitter account for like a month in order to... And, and, and I think... Uh, it wasn't like a... Maybe it was a Best Buy. I forget what it was. But we finally got our hands on one. And I know I sound like a like a fucking stereotype, but I swear to God, I don't play it. Like, it was such a bad fucking purchase. I mean, it's nice to be able to upscale PS4 games, the ones that can. There are elements of it that are good, but... Oh, fuck. Yeah, do it. See what happens. Fuck. That was tense. Oh, fuck. I got no ammo. Why do I have no ammo? I... Didn't I refill my shit? Okay, so now, this is one of my issues with the game. I don't know if this is going to come through on stream, but I'm going to try to show it off. There's a sort of choppiness to the game outside of what I was talking about earlier. If you watch her move horizontally, the camera seems choppy as well. Look at the background. Focus on just the background moving and not the character. I think what's happening here is the camera is tied to the position of the character at all times. And when the character's movement is choppy, so is the movement of the camera maybe? I'm not 100%. I think it's like maybe the character moves to a threshold that causes the camera to move forward. And this is happening sequentially. So it's like bam, bam, bam. I'm not sure. I've been trying to work it out, and I really... These are all best guesses. I don't know anything about game design, so... I don't know if that's true, but it seems... Potentially, that might be the case. Oh, okay, I, I we haven't upgraded our shit yet, so we only get one magazine per. Okay. Have you seen the design choice for their labs now? It's just white walls. What are we talking about? Whose labs? Now I own every PlayStation console. Oh yeah, the PS1. I would love to have a PS1 just because how cool they look. That's a really nice looking machine. I will say it's much better looking than the PS5, but that doesn't really say too much. What a stupid looking console. And then the fact that they tell you to put it right side up, but give you fucking liquid metal on your GPU and CPU, it's like... This is set up to fail. I think in the next year we're going to see a massive like Red Ring of Death style situation for PS5s and it's all going to be liquid metal has pulled at the bottom of the chip and caused it to dry at the top. Is it an intended shop um, because of the filter to give the game a certain look? Potentially. I'm not going to rule that out because I would imagine if you're going for, you know, that's always a, a sort of tough balancing act when you're doing retro style video, video effects is like, where do you draw the line where like functionality supersedes presentation, you know? Very small gripe. But it is probably the only thing about the game that I would say persistently bothered me in any way. You could just sort of see her lurch forward every once in a while like there was a hitch or a hiccup. And that's how it would look in a 3D game. So obviously, you know, I'm... I'm... There's a chance it may not even exist. Because now that I'm looking at it, I'm not seeing it. But the strobing effect in the background may be... I don't know. So much of doing YouTube videos like this is me just guessing at shit, so. <clears throat> I love how calculated and scientific she is throughout the game. Everything that happens here, she goes, like, she gets really in-depth with analyzing. I love it. Just bought a PS5, though. I'm kind of worried about the SSD for both the PS5 and the Xbox. Uh, worried how? I'll tell you, um, you're going to just replace it. You're going to spend so much fucking time deleting games out of your shit because they are so fucking big. You might as well just buy a, like a four terabyte or something. I don't know. Spend like $800 on a NVMe drive for your PS5.
I think I have a terabyte in my PS5, and I'm just non-stop trying to clear shit out. I don't have to do this. I could run from them. It's fucking fun. Kodelka, jeez, that's hard to tell. <laughs> it is. I don't think I've heard of this game. It looks cool. Is it any good? Suck him a dick. It's fucking awesome. Every time I read your name, it makes it sound like I hate you and I'm fucking insulting you. Here we go. Now we're knifing. Just added a 2 terabyte internal for my PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. That helps. Yeah, I think 2 terabytes probably the minimum you should have on a PS5. I, and like I said, I don't play the PS5 a shit ton. But it is so easy to fill it up. Especially with like AAA games. I mean, if you're just doing like indie titles and stuff, it won't be quite as bad. But every time I do one of those like port comparison videos, I have to delete like 500 gigs off of my PS5. Why are you watching from Xbox right now, Church? That's like um, meta in a way, I guess. You're watching a video game on a video game console that you're not playing but is being broadcast from elsewhere. Very interesting idea. The concept of what's happening here. <laughs> oh, okay, you're on PC. I get what you're saying, alright. Oh shit, Gobbin's in the house. What's up, dude? I imagine you've got something terribly insulting for me. Let's see what you got. No, 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 PC curve screen, 3080 Ti. You know, I kind of like a, a curve on a, a large screen, but I really only like it with ultra-wides, and I can't use ultra-wides anymore. I mean, they're amazing. They look so good, especially for first-person games. I really like the sort of cinematic effect they give to first-person games, but fucking hell, they really ruin creating content. Like, you can't make content with an ultra-wide display unless you just put it in 16 by 9 and then at that point you're not using your ultra wide for anything and I even found that when I would use uh, when I would play certain games um, I think Metro Last Light and Metro 2033 were two really good examples of games that won't necessarily listen to the settings that you told it to do but we'll look at your monitor's EDID and it will kind of like figure out what it's going to do from there so it was displaying a 21 by 3 I think that's the 21 wait was it 21 by 9 I forget maybe it's 21 by 9 anyways it was displaying an ultra wide aspect ratio inside of a 16 by 9 widescreen essentially so there are certain games that'll do that, and if you are playing a game outside of ultra wide, then you sort of get a stretched image, even though it's not stretching outside the bounds of your monitor. It's really fucked up. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh fuck, he's coming in with the niceness. He knows what he's doing. I'm not falling for your shit. We need to see a Mr. Mosquito retrospective from Jared. Now that's a horror game. That'd be interesting to see. Wasn't that called something different in Japan, like Mr. Mesquishin or something some like weird like that? I know there's a combination of these that will get me down there. I don't want to imagine how Dr. Shewesker there handles a scalpel delusion during surgery. What if that was your kink? What, is, is there like a, a surgical kink? For like, do people get horny off of surgery? You probably shouldn't answer or ask questions like that because then someone's going to answer and then you're going to know it. I love my ultra wide, but if the monitor takes a shit, I'll just get a 16 by 9. Yeah. Ah, 6 9. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, like, it is a really cool fucking look. I won't lie, but for content creation, it's so unusable. Like, it would be it would be really fun to play the games that I did on my own, but when it came time to just fucking record footage for something I had to put on the channel, it was a nightmare. It exists. If it exists, there's a kink. Yeah, for sure. I thought that those are really sure, like, it exists, it is a kink sort of statement. I would have loved to have seen that from you guys. <laughs> hey, fuck, what's up, Luke? How you doing, man? Shinobido retrospective. Wait. You just seven survivor. It's funny you say that. A, a buddy of mine, Imran, loves the Shinobido games. It's so weird. He's such a, he's like one of those he just doesn't really play video games very much. He's just like a regular guy, you know, he's not a big gamer, but when he got a Vita, he got Shinobido and he got obsessed with it, which is fucking adorable. <clears throat> The stream gets me excited in the loins. I almost read that as lions, so that's how fucking stupid I am. What's up, dude? How you doing, Mike? Okay, we need the star now. Okay, this is the star. And then once we get back up there, we'll be good. Okay, so let's see. Duo Brown said, played through this game recently, thought it was flawed, but still loved it. Hell yeah, dude. Um, just out of curiosity's sake, what did you? What were the, some of the flaws you found? Because I'm about to make a video on it, and I want to see if I noticed those as well. Okay, and now, now I think we should be good. We just got to do the crescent moon ones. How do we get to you? That's the full moon. Crescent moon somewhere around here. Maybe over here. No. Dun, dun, dun. Still refuse to get digital only Alan Wake 2 though. Why would you have to get digital only? Did they not have physical copies of that game? Am I that out of the loop? That song's been stuck in my head ever since I beat that game. Jerry, can you stop being dyslexic already? It's impossible. Can't happen. I'm too far gone. Homer Holt says, game good? Game good. Um, I do like how PlayStation managed to stay consistent when it's with its numbering. That is appreciated for sure, especially for someone like me who hates it when things don't like fit in. You know, when things stand out, I, I can't stand it. But it would be really nice if either console would really get their fucking act together as far as backwards compatibility goes. I know that's a pretty fucking milk toast take, but like really and truly. Oh wait, is that the Oh, okay. Now we can make it down there. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It seems really important that the new consoles have some sort of way to play a majority of, of the previous consoles libraries. Because moving forward in the future, what we've experienced in retro gaming right now with a PS1, with upscalers and stuff, some of these things being fully necessary in order to play a retro game on a modern display, it, it just sort of seems like it would be really unwise to continue forward into the, the age of 4K and not give a lot of consideration as to how we're going to represent the age of 1080p you know, in when we transition into 8K, let's say. It seems like a pretty um, unimportant issue because they are video games at the end of the day. And, and truly, this is going to be hard for some people. These are not 
all that important in the grand scheme of things, like being able to eat and survive and find a, a person that loves you in your life is far more important than like um, taking care of old video games. But that being said, um, I do think it's it's relatively important to sort of preserve the stuff that had such a significant effect on, I mean, history, I guess. Recent history, since we're talking about, what, like the beginning of the 80s, but still. These things are at the very least historically... Uh, significant, let's say that. Emulation, that's the way. Um, yes and no. I think emulation is good for us, for the people to have in our hands. Uh, and that's that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think um, emulation is, is more of a stopgap solution. It's sort of how we get them to... Or how we sort of force their hand, right? If we're able to emulate things, then we're a little less beholden to a company that would charge us for that service, right? But I think as far as the, the companies themselves go, we need an official solution. But that, there's nothing that says that couldn't be a, a combination approach. You know, you take a video game developer like M4 that creates some sort of universal emulator that can run inside of a game development environment. You know what I mean? That way uh, HD remasters and stuff like that would be easier moving forward because I would be fine if the way that we preserve video games was to also remaster them because that's fun. So, I don't know. I guess the point is don't listen to anything I say. I never know what I'm talking about. Emulation, no. I mean, emulation is, is good, and I think it's important for regular people to be able to preserve things, but we we need a, uh, a industry arm doing the same thing. Okay, so this is going to be fucking tough. I think I remember it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Shit. Fucked it up. <laughs> Fun Mr. FPGA. We can get ourselves a cell core. Honestly. Yeah. But again, uh, I think emulation is sort of a stopgap solution. It's great for us to have, but we need the companies that are responsible for getting us into this situation to also make some sort of a move here. You know, because you want your DIY solution, but you need your official solution as well. And both of those need to compete with each other. You are bred. And then it transitions straight into the intro of Silent Hill 3. Mainstream solutions is what you're trying. There you go. Yeah, we need a mainstream solution for sure. So that when we get a DIY one, we have a, a platform to launch from. You know what I mean? Or vice versa. If we have a DIY one, the industry will have a platform to launch from. You know, emulation started as a way to, you know, make money, kind of to screw the system. As far as, far as video games go, emulation in video game senses uh, sort of started as people trying to fuck the system. But if we could take that and turn it into a scenario where people could benefit. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, we need to get Alex in here for that. Do you guys remember the whole Bleem controversy? Fucking amazing. But, so here's the weird thing. This... Oh, so that was at the cookout. That's what it was. Okay. They mentioned a cookout earlier in the game. Douglas Monroe says, Jared, do you want to read my last comment? Yeah, I'll see what you said. Hold up one second. I got to get my mouse over here. Are you Douglas Monroe? 
I can't. Man, the last thing you said seems like it was a long time ago. Can you type it out for me again? I can't really find it. Unless it's like way back there. I just got a switch. Outside of wanting to go uh, to play Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, I can also play NES and SNES games on my Switch. Honestly, the emulation on Switch is pretty fucking good. It's not perfect. I don't like those little gray borders on the side of the screen, but it's very good. I just wish that you didn't have to pay such a ridiculous fee in order to to use it, you know. Pointing at devs? No, never next subject. You don't think the developers will get in? I mean, M4 is a developer and they sort of forwarded emulation as far as mainstream solutions go. Yeah, I'm actually looking into church. I'm looking into buying an EverDrive 64 right now. Okay, so I think you have to leave on the third noise for that thing we just did. I'm pretty sure. Let's find out. You should play Xenoblade. <laughs> Dovu deserves to have me play Xenoblade Chronicles. And I've been so mean to him by not playing it yet, but I just have not got around to it. I've been so busy. I will, though, I swear. That is the name. You are correct, yeah. Show me the champion of light. Darkness. Fuck, I got that song stuck in my head hard. I'm telling you, it's the third one. We're going to fucking do this. <clears throat> we will kill off every single member of Ares if, it, if that's what it takes. Okay, so it's not the third one. It's the fourth one then. You fucking asshole. The game says it's the third one, by the way. And it's lying. Let's do Alex so we can upgrade the handgun. Looking forward to Nintendo's next console. Yeah, I hope they learn a lot from the mistakes they made with the Switch. Which sounds weird, I know, because the Switch was so fucking successful. But, like, hardware-wise, it is kind of... Sort of a piece of shit. Maybe let's say architecture-wise it's a piece of shit. Because the display is really solid. And the build quality other than the analog sticks is actually pretty good. Oh, I put my gun away. No, why did you... Hold on. Go up there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's the third tick, right? I did it on the fucking third tick. I swear. Oh, but you know what it was? I was trying to move forward and not down. Let's do it this time. We'll try to move down instead of forward. Out of curiosity, how many resets have you had? Um, so, interestingly, in this game, you don't really benefit from resetting quite as much. It's sort of made to be played. Uh, you just lose a character and you continue forward. So it's it's a little more fun to not reset with this one. Although, yes, it is hard for me to, to resist the urge. Some of my friends have Switches and they love them. I mean, really and truly, everybody loves their Switch. For me, uh, 720p video, upscaled 720p video output in 2023 is unacceptable. As, as far as I'm concerned, people in Nintendo should be arrested for that. Like, you don't fucking put out a goddamn major video game console from a trillionaire company and have it output an upscaled 720p. You can suck my fucking dick on that one, Nintendo. <laughs> Eat my fucking ass, 720p in 2023. Fuck you. 
And then here's the worst part too. You're going to upscale 720p in 2023 and it still won't run at 60 frames per second. Get the fuck out of here. I'm through with that. And, and, and that's the thing. That's the weird thing. Because there are good games on the Switch. And the Switch is a functional piece of technology that I can enjoy playing sometimes. But literally, the idea that Nintendo looked me in my fucking face and spit in it. It's like, yeah, here you go. Fuck you. 720p. Suck my dick. You're going to pay for this. We're Nintendo. There's going to be a Pokemon game on it. Do you think you're going to fucking buy anything else? Of course not. All right, let's see. Yo, fuck off. That was it. I was trying to run forward. Hell yeah. Yo, David's been a member for 12 months. And he likes Creed. Hell yeah. Church said, bro, it's a GameCube. Uh, yeah, essentially. I feel bad. I shouldn't talk so much shit about the Switch. <laughs> really and truly, I am so... It's it's so hard. I'm so divided because it really is... It's a video game console. It plays video games. I'm an adult. Who fucking cares? It shouldn't be that important. But, like, imagine... Let's put it this way. Imagine... Let's say David let me borrow 20 bucks. And I met up with David. I was like, yo, here's that 20 back. And I give him 15, right? And I leave, and that's it, right? David is not going to go poor from five bucks, but it's the fucking, it's, it's the principle of the matter. That's, that's what Nintendo has done here. There's nothing like, listen, I could plug a, my switch into the RetroTink 4k and it's going to look great upscaled. I'm going to actually get the sharpness that I'd like out of it. So that's, it's not necessarily an issue, but it's the principle of the matter. Nintendo looked us in the eye released a 720p video game console in 2020 and all of us said thank you please can we have some more and that's fucked like we get fucked over so hard in this industry with bullshit fucking development practices like fucking on disc DLC nonsense and pay to win mechanics and People fucking putting out unfinished video games and shit. And when Nintendo does it, we applaud. But if EA was to release a video game console that was 720p in 2023, we would have fucking murdered them in the streets for it. It just, it's, it's so strange how we hold Capcom to fucking higher standards than we do Nintendo. Especially because both of them fucking suck. All right, so we're going to have to keep a... I won't, I'm interested to see if you guys can follow along because this seemed easy to me, but maybe I'm just a mad genius. Let's find out. Oh, fuck, we need the code. Damn it. I have not paid attention enough to remember where that is. Let's see if we can get it in our archive. I believe it's a date. Maybe 1896? There's no way that's it, but... Okay. I knew that that wasn't it, but it's like, you know... Potentially... Six... Okay, so I guess we haven't seen it yet, unless... Why was it... Oh, okay, so the combat part. Yeah, but add in that Nintendo developed the console three years before launch. You're looking at 2014 technology almost a decade now. And really and truly, it's not so much about the technology that's in it, but it's more about the cooling, you know, because they have the NVIDIA chip they have in there can do 1080p. Like, the, it, this is not something that's outside of the capabilities of the Switch. And, you know, I can't appreciate the thing came out like, what, 2017? So it's like. But what I'm saying is, is that people are still 
buying their switches as if this is a modern piece of technology and it's not it's incredibly fucking dated at this point And that's not a problem if there are Switch games that you enjoy and you like them. Like, you don't have to take this as, like, an insult to you, which a lot of people who own Switches do. Um, it's If you like the Switch and you have no issues with it, then there's nothing I'm saying here that needs to ever affect you. But objectively speaking, it's bad hardware. Or hardware that is not up to the task of playing the video games that is developed for the console. GameCube was held back by mini discs. Yes, it was actually a, a fairly competent machine. Dungeon pit goes there. That goes to the secret lab. I need to get that fucking code. Hold on one second, guys. I'm gonna look it up. We knew I was gonna do this. Where's it? Okay. Uh, what would you call that? Combination. Lock? No, it's not a combo lock, is it? Let's see. There's a website here for it. Darkness. Where are you? Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. We're in. Yo, Libre. Member for 34 months. Thank you, man. My OG, well, my OG, my OLED LG C3 came in the other day. It's freaking beautiful. That must be how my parents felt when I was born. <laughs> Dude, I can, I have a C1 in here and I have a G or a C3 upstairs. And yeah, they're fucking killer. Okay, so I think, oh yeah, yeah that's right. We, just the fucking code, Jared. But I forgot it. So, this will be interesting. Halo is absolutely overrated. You know, I don't really like Halo that much. <clears throat> I mean, it's good enough, though. I don't find anything about Halo to be offensively bad. I used to make fun of my wife all the time for loving Halo. I call her mainstream and stuff. It was fun. I love the earlier Halo games and enjoyed the remastered versions on PC, but there's a lot of good first-person shooters out there. There definitely were. Uh, Halo was just a really good example of uh, right time, right place. Consoles needed um, a first-person shooter that would blow the doors open and make it, uh, I guess, possible for developers to see the um, to see the platform. Oh, that's how we would have got that thing. Okay, that's my bad. Fuck, we could have solved that. All right, anyways. I forget what I was talking about. I've recently watched some Bacon Productions and Vintage Modern... Vintage Modern Gamer. Oh, Modern Vintage Gamer. That's who you're talking about. Okay, my bad. Sorry. I was like, who is that? That sounds cool. Uh, they've been going nuts on trying to get the switch to run 1080p at 60 FPS by overclocking the hardware side um, with better fans. Yeah, see, really and truly, that's all you need. It's the form factor that makes the switch as fucking bad performing as it is. If you could put, listen, if they would have doubled the width of the switch, they would have been able to maybe not lock in 60 FPS, but it would have been way more po uh, like possible. As it is now, there though they're essentially just fucking passively cooling the Tegra chip that's in there. 
And there's a lot of shit that you can achieve 60 FPS with, but I don't think a passively cooled Tegra chip is going to be one of them, especially at 720p. And I'm sure someone has said it in chat, but yes, there are native 1080p games on Switch. Potentially three of them. Okay, so I think it was like 4596, but I completely forgot, so let's see. Yo, 4596, I'm a genius. My memory can never be fucked with, and that's why I can never remember the name of a video game when I'm streaming. <laughs> Four. Oh fuck, have you been recording this whole time? Damn it. That's gonna be a big file. <laughs> hey, I was right with the 96 though. I was so fucking close. Alright, so. You guys are gonna have to pay attention. Right there in the middle. Don't use your fingers. It's cheating if you follow it with your fingers. Follow it with just your eyes. Fuck, I lost it. Oh no. I think it's the far left. What do you guys get? I think it's the far left one. The only problem is it's a one hit kill if I get it wrong. That's the only thing. <laughs> and there's like no traditional saving in this game. <clears throat> you got to do more videos with Tikio Sam and get a little more wild. I'm too zen. Okay. I could take that fucking criticism. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be... Oh, fuck. No, I'm not actually... I got to message that fool. I haven't talked to him in a while. Oh, fuck. But El Bueno Ostrich is saying left. Let's go with the majority opinion here. It's mainstream time. I lost it for like a single move, and then I guessed, um, and then followed it again. So let's see if you guys fucked up the same way I did. Let's see. Wait, what? The fuck does that mean? Somebody probably left a valve handle in all three of these. The other two are just stuck behind the spikes somewhere. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, we got it. All right, you guys were right. El Bueno Ostrich is a good thing we didn't go with you. So, Jared, are you excited for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? You know, the superior version of the <laughs> Of course, dude. I mean, I can't wait to get the finished version of the story the way that they always intended for it to be told. I probably will play it, but I'm really mad about that. I'm. It, it would be nice if it released on PC. That way I could pirate it and not give Squaresoft money for a, a product that I know I'm not going to enjoy. But here we are. I really like the moaning. Oh, that's right. You got to hold it. Final Fantasy is dead. And that's all right, though. It's okay for series to end. You know what I mean? I made a video a very long time ago. Not a popular video. People did not like it. But the title, I think, was something along the lines of... Uh, just let Resident Evil die. And... It wasn't meant to be like a, a like a, a fucking hot take kind of deal. It was genuinely just like, I think that maybe Resident Evil has accomplished all it can accomplish. And we should probably just let the series peter out the way that it, it was always going to. And maybe start up a, a spiritual successor to the series or something like that. And this was before the RE2 remake was announced. So I ended up, you know, eating a lot of crow for that. But I still think there's a little bit of truth there. I still think we should probably just allow the series to be what it is, to just die off, and then we can have some sort of a spiritual successor. And, you know, the same thing with Silent Hill. People are stoked on these Silent Hill releases, even though they look fucking terrible. And it's like, just allow it to die. It's okay. There are plenty of games who have sort of aped Silent Hill's bit, and they've done a really good job at it. So I think it's possible for all of us to just maybe let franchises die every once in a while. You know, the really shitty thing is when they die down here, you can't get their resources. K 
kill it if you have to. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Did I ever play Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines? I just got my hands on an OG copy and I'm excited to revisit the game. Uh, yeah, I did. I love it. I made a video on Bloodlines a very long time ago and I was not very good at making videos, but I really liked the way that I explained it. In that video, I said that I have games that I play because they're very fun for me to play and I enjoy the mechanical way in which they function but then there are also games that I play that I only play for the experience of the world that they build and whether or not they function mechanically I could really care less and I think Bloodlines is one of those games and that's not to say that it's bad it's just that even if it is bad I wouldn't care because I just enjoy being in the world of Bloodlines and the same thing goes for Stalker I, I think we could probably make an argument for Stalker being objectively badly made, but it's one of those games that even if it is bad, I would just never know about it because I enjoy it so much. I like it so much that the game world is all I really care about. <clears throat> Jared, are you willing to let tank controls die? No, because they still function. They still work. You could put tank controls in a video game in 2023 and it would run perfectly. Oh, that's another thing. Speaking of which, ironically, this game does not have tank controls. It actually uses your analog stick, which is hard to get used to, actually. I mean, that's fair. World building definitely does matter. Even if it's just a little bit, the player always appreciates it. We do still have tanks, that's true. And their controls have remained relatively the same. But I thought I... Well, then where's the fucking thing then? That'd be an interesting idea, electric tanks. Because it's sort of combining the idea that um, tanks are an implement of war and destruction with the idea that if they are going to be an implement of war and destruction, they have to do so peacefully. Tell them to add tank controls in your review. You know what? I will. Hold up one second. Let me <laughs> make a note real quick. Because I have to add to the script anyways today. I just found out about um, its pre-production, how cool it was. Um, and what was the other thing? The beta version. Okay. I'll do that, but not because you told me to. For other reasons. If I can cope with the death of Tenshu, Legacy of Kane, Splinter Cell, Kengo, Colony Wars, folks can cope with the death of FF. This is true. Man, I have not played Colony Wars in so long. Okay, that goes there. Where, where do you head? Only if they do a full remake of RE01 and Code Veronica. I'd like to see that. That'd be fun. You type faster than I think. You know what's weird? This is going to fucking blow your mind, David. So you hear how fast I just typed? Which, by the way, is not that fast. It's, it's pretty slow. But I only type with my fucking index fingers. Isn't that weird? Like, if I type right now let's see how relatively okay I can type so I can type pretty fast but I literally only do it with one finger at a time 
was very weird. I never learned how to like like type type. Oh shit, Angel Dust. Thank you very much for the five bucks. Good looking king. I finally made it to a stream. Hell yeah. You know, your name reminds me that Angel Dust just toured here and I miss them. I feel like an idiot. I still have that fucking Alan Wake song stuck in my head so hard. Wait, so the door on the other side here is also... That's an unforeseen force, right? Okay, in the boiler room, I don't have any light. You know what? Maybe we continue exploring the boiler room. Oh my god, the notification just came through for that super chat. Holy fuck. Oh, that is where we have to go. Okay, good. I am the master of index flexing. These two guys right here, you mean? Well, you know, when you lift weights as much as I do, David, it's almost impossible for your index fingers not to become jacked. <laughs> That's a really good animation. Okay, so now, see, this is, remember when I told you there's one section in, in the bottom, or in the, the basement where you can use that door peak? That's what I was talking about. This section right here, kind of lets you mess around with the door peak more than I'll oh, see lucky but he can hear us though if I run he can hear me so he'll bang on the door and he can actually get in that's so fucking sick I just wish that it was utilized more often is all I haven't gotten into any of the like super zombies yet that's weird Is that the song you're humming? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the uh, song from Alan Wake. It's that, that musical that plays. Show me the champion of light. I'll show me your of darkness. I think those are the lyrics. I don't remember it. Something's weird with your notifications. Yeah, they're super off, and when they do... Oh, wait, where's my bar? Hold on. Oh, wait, hold up. There we go. Does that make the stream better for everybody? MTG says hello. How you doing, MTG? Okay, where's this fucking fool at? Oh, fuck! Domed her. Yes, Jared is massive, but I'm nimble. Remember that first. <laughs> that is true. But are you really nimble, though? Because I don't believe that. It's the Herald of Darkness. Okay, that's what it is. Fuck. I was trying to look at him while he was doing it. Damn right, something catches my eye. More streamy? There we go. That's what we needed. MTG says live in the dream. Fuck yeah. It makes two of us. Ooh, speaking of which, Josine's not here. My wife went to visit family in America, which means, boys, we can eat pizza for breakfast and go to bed whenever we want. This fucking sleepover has officially started. It'd be kind of sick if I beat the game without dying any more times. Just literally only dying on the shotgun. <laughs> Jared, talk about dumb YouTube drama like Destiny's Deviant Divorce. That's kind of... 
all right, so I feel bad because it's not good when anybody gets divorced, especially people who, like, I assume Destiny probably doesn't want to be divorced. So you feel bad for the guy in that sense. But it is kind of hard to feel bad for somebody when everybody said, hey, maybe this isn't a really good way to, you know, um, for you to, I don't know, move forward with your relationship because it could create problems in the future as far as staying intimate. And then when like those problems take place, it's hard not to go, well, I mean, we told you not to put the fire in your hands because it would burn you. It's just really strange that it took you so long to get burned. But you do, I mean, you kind of have to feel bad for, a, for the guy. Like if you've ever had like a really good girlfriend or you've been married before like it's certainly not good getting divorced like you don't want to do that maybe don't let other dudes plow your wife i mean it's simple it, it, but it, <clears throat> less um let's say less vulgar than that human beings psychologically speaking share pretty similar traits and I think a majority of those traits probably work against the idea of polyamory. Most people. I think there probably are people who could make uh, polyamorous relationships work really well and, and maintain very you know healthy and fucking successful relationships. But I think those people probably are not even a full percentage point of the population. You know what I mean? I really don't think that that's something the average human being can keep up. Because the average human being has an ego. And, you know, it's like, we're not talking about an ego in the slang sense. Like, more in like the Nietzsche sense. And, like, you can't... Knowing that something that is potentially supposed to be just for you, you know, is being shared by someone else, is going to get to anyone, no matter what. No matter how psychologically well you're put together. And I don't think... It, the average person is built for the concept of polyamory and i don't think you should put them through it probably because that seems this this might be i'll say this there is definitely a chance that i have a very sort of like traditional view on like marriage and relationships i'm willing to accept that that potentially that could be like a bias of mine but i think maybe that ended up working out as tradition because of the same way that like uh, fish developed fins it, it, the more six, successful relationships who were able to like you know procreate and stuff were probably the ones who were devoted to each other in that sense but i've only ever really been in monogamous relationships so potentially you know all of this stuff i've never experienced myself so you could say well how would you know I, that's probably a valid argument, but I feel like, you know, in the same sense that I don't need to be shot in order to know that getting shot would be incredibly damaging to me and then it would not feel very good. And I would probably had to go to the you know hospital in that same sense. I could probably make certain reasonable predictions for things like polyamory. Making sense, that's cringe. That is true. I probably should cut that shit out. It's <laughs> sad uh, that Destiny's son hates both of his parents. You think he does? It, well, it really sucks because Destiny kind of hates his parents too. And that's shitty, man. And it's really weird too because he's fucking Cuban. And it's not... For those of you that don't know, Cuban households are very family oriented. So it's very strange to see some of the stuff that he said about... How, like, you know, when he found out his mom was, like, a conservative, he wished she would die or something like that. It's like, dude, I get that absurdist humor and um, general fucking, uh, like, crass humor can be super funny. And I understand that. But even when you're fucking joking, it's like, yeah, like, I found out my mom was conservative. I hope she dies. It's like, that's fucked, dude. You know what I mean? Because it, and it's not like he was saying it in a really sarcastic way. He was saying, I hope all conservatives die. And then the person he was debating was like, wasn't your mom a conservative? And he's like, mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, that's, mm, I don't know. It's tough. But he's destiny. You can never 
Destiny is the least macho Cuban. You know what? Let's do this. Let's let's set up the Jared Destiny debate, and it'll be the two, the dichotomy of of Cuban masculinity. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to feel any kind of way about Destiny because you're not really ever sure what's real with him because he just says stuff sometimes in order to create controversy in order to get like like a, a conservative uh, viewership. But then what he'll do is he'll just say stuff that'll piss them off. And then you never really know how Destiny actually feels about anything because everything he says is always some kind of like I'm pontificating on some strange fucking psychological phenomena or something and it's like nothing's ever like here's how I feel about something it's always like here's something that's going to get me on the front page of Twitter and then a bunch of people that follow Ben Shapiro will yell at me and you know which will strengthen my fan base and then he does the the exact opposite thing next year and it's like I never know what that guy actually thinks Destiny debates or so last year. No, they weren't good last year either. That guy's a fucking idiot. I would rather watch videos of Destiny sort of just kind of like talking about how he feels. and Because in his debates, he just he just talks quick. He says really stupid shit. Like the stuff he says doesn't make any sense. But I said, no, 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 but hold on, hold on right now. If you were going to be... And it's like, if I talked really fast like that, you would have an issue responding to me as well. But he takes that as like debate wins. So he's like, yeah, I just scored a real good point there because I spoke so fast I couldn't technically be understood. And when this happens in a game, it's always a really good thing, too. When a house starts sounding like the intro track to a heavy metal album, awesome things are about to happen. We express the same idea at the same time. I might be more of a meathead than I thought. Me and Alex are exactly the same. It's funny that some people consider him to be the more rational bread tuber. Suck my dick. He's the more rational bread tuber. <laughs> he is insanely rational by comparison. It's wacky how much more rational he is than most people on BreadTube. I mean, let's uh, be very honest about this. There is one place where you are likely to see pro-pedophilia arguments, and it's on BreadTube. That's all there is fucking to it. This fucking shotgun. Give him a shoot gun. Oh, I was hoping it would get them both. Oh, there's a super zombies. Okay, these are the ones I was talking about. Any publicity is good publicity to some. I like this painting here because there actually is a shortcut door behind it. It's fucking dope. I don't understand how people can do that, though. Where you sort of just misrepresent yourself all the time in order to have people follow you on social media that's got to be exhausting because you're not that person all the time so you have to constantly be like on just acting you know seems like a fucking shitty way to live honestly but you know what let's let's really dead serious this is a genuine point that i always have in my head and and, and I never bring up things on stream unless somebody on chat triggers it in my head. But really and truly, when you listen to people like Destiny or or, or his equivalent on the right, maybe I'm not just focusing on on one side specifically. But when you're when you're listening to like political and and sociological and cultural rhetoric, uh, maybe more importantly than how intuitive or or intelligent what they're saying is to you, maybe more important than that, how happy are they? Like, how, how good is their life? Maybe take that into account before you start listening to people. Because a lot of the people that, that the internet tends to get their advice from are fucking miserable. They hate themselves, and they're medicated to the fucking gills. And they're just one step away from suicide at all times. And, and that's not to belittle, uh, you know, mental conditions like that. 
But you probably shouldn't listen to someone who's in that constant state as far as how you should orient your life. And maybe when, you know, you're, you're navigating the internet, it's really easy to come across opinions, like the one that I'm expressing right now. And you don't know me, so it's pretty easy for you to assume the best and assume, well, why would this guy just fucking out of nowhere lie to me? So he's probably telling some form of the truth, right? So instead, just fucking lurk my social media. Try to get a feel for how my life operates. And then think to yourself, like, is this a life that I could see myself living? Okay, then maybe me and this guy, psychologically, mentally, politically, culturally, whatever, maybe we're in tune. But if if you're getting your advice from people who are suicidal, who are fucking not dealing with their lives very well, who are not very good, you know, with spending their money, who are not good with maintaining their personal relationships, who are can't keep a marriage going you know what I mean things like that if those are things that you already have and that you already excel at maybe you should start considering the possibility that you don't need advice from those people and potentially you could give them some you know what I mean not in a preachy kind of way but maybe keep that in mind when you locate rhetoric on the internet Because it seems to me that it's very easy for someone to go on the internet and to express an idea and for that idea to be relatively intuitive and that makes it seem like it's like, yeah, okay, so that's probably the truth then. And then you look at them and they fucking hate themselves and it's like, well, maybe I don't need your advice. Maybe the advice that comes from someone who can't stand themselves would lead me to hate myself. Calling it this mansion death game is a simulation. Uh, I can't say anything either way. (laughs) Jared, chat, how many of you saw the new trailer for GTA 6? It takes place in Vice City, and it supposedly has a female protagonist. I'm fine with it as long as she's not a Mary Sue character. I'm fine with any character being in in any video game as long as they're written well. Um, I'm not really big on open-world GTA kind of games, so... It probably won't be for me. But you never know. Maybe it ends up being really great. Stranger things have happened, right? Use too many big words. My head hurts. Okay, so now that's a good... Okay, so don't listen to me because I make your head hurt. There you go. Alex Guy says, Hey, Jared, do you have a business email? Um, Alex Guy, I really don't. I probably should have one. Um, do you have a uh, Twitter? You could DM me on Twitter. I, I usually conduct most of my business on there. It's probably not the best way to do it. But if you do have Twitter, you can find me at Avalanche Jared, J A R E D. My DMs are open, so do it up, man. Oh, Alex is the one who wanted to do the interview. Yeah. I'm I'm mega down for that, by the way. That'd be really fun. I like doing like podcast and interview style stuff. Gives you a chance to kind of think about the things that you normally don't think about. Like if you have a a, a part of your process that you always do, you typically don't know why. You know, you just do it because that's the way you've always done it. But when someone asks you why, it gives you an opportunity to think. And, yeah, I wonder why I do that. Motherfucking Cass. What's up, dude? What do you say? You've been playing this game for over an hour and there's been no random encounters. Fool, there's been a million random encounters. How dare you? Well, I mean, I guess they're not random. They're, like, represented on the map. I don't know where I'm going. But I know I'm planning on having a good time. Fuck, what am I going to eat today? I wonder how many people watch me when I stream, see how many items I examine over and over and over again, even though I've examined them a trillion times. 
that would bother me, honestly, if I were to see someone do it, so. Fucking dare you. Oh shit, you got the blicky. Fuck out of here. You, I am too good to be killed. I'm a golden god. Fuck. That was... I wasn't recording. That would have looked so cool in the video. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. Uh. Dobu told me to eat a cubic meter of salt. I'm pretty sure that's enough to kill a man. So I will do it. Jared, demand Rockstar does proper Floridian representation. I Honestly, so far, it looks like they're getting it close. <laughs> On it, really and truly, if there's one thing I recommend about this game, and by the way, I recommend you play this game, but play this game as downs and just examine everything because his fucking reactions to shit, that's so good. Bandito Bane. Been a while, man. Re-upping after 10 months. Thank you so much, dude. Hey, Jared, have you seen Sibby's new video? Did it come out today? I'm excited. Fuck yeah. New Sibby video. Hold up. Wait. If it didn't come out today, I'm going to be disappointed. Hold up. Let's see. Oh. You meant new as in eight days ago. Yeah, I did see it. It was good. It wasn't as good as the one before it, though. The one before it, hold on, what was that one? Yeah, 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 the last blind stalker was really good. I love seeing somebody who doesn't know stalker like the back of their hand experience how weird it is for the first time. Would you look at that? That's actually a good idea, Crispy Ash. The fucking... The clip. Hell yeah. Man, put that in the fucking video. There you go, Casper. There's your fucking random encounter. Never come to my stream again. I did not know I had that many shotgun shells. Downs is definitely badass. Let's do this. Let's let's make this stream uh, more functional for me. What would you guys say, really and truly? Like, um, what would you say your biggest complaint for my content is? What would you like to see more of, or what's something that I do that bothers you, or? Maybe with like how the videos are structured or the writing, whatever it is. Let's see what you guys, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see because I've been really trying to rework my process lately. I've been trying to re mess with my EQ so that my voice sounds a little better. I've been trying to write a little differently. This, um, this you will die here tonight video is going to have a little bit of a different format that I'm kind of excited for. But anyway, yeah, like something that, I do in my videos that maybe you don't like so much or you think could be done better. <clears throat> Florida is the California of the American South. Yeah. Well, it's the, honestly, what it is, it's the opposite of the California in the South. Like we have California and Florida and they're kind of like representing two extremes on the same horizontal axis. You know what I mean? They do both have large Latino populations, that is true. I'm a product of it. I think growing up in Miami is something that I wouldn't trade for the entire world, really and truly. I was able to not just learn about, but be around so many different types of cultures. And I'm not just talking about like the fucking bullshit modern idea of diversity like I'm talking about genuinely like you would just hang out with people from Trinidad and get an idea for how they were you know and like but but interestingly what you learn about a super multicultural cultural multicultural multicultural cultural <laughs> place like uh, Miami is is that um, in in most places in America making 
inappropriate comments about someone's like identifying racial characteristics would be seen as like fucked. But it's like because we're all so different in Miami, we sort of celebrate those differences through like ridicule and, and gallows humor and, and shit like that. So like making an incredibly racially insensitive comment in mixed company in Miami is like fully fucking that's how shit goes. And as a kid growing up, you sort of had to learn. It's like, oh, this isn't how you can act with the rest of the world. You can't bring up people's immutable characteristics in a negative like that. Yeah, I really think growing up in Miami did me a massive amount of good as far as socializing me uh, and getting me used to being around people who were so vastly different from me in their perspective or their where they came from or how they like what their their um fuck it is so hard to think of the terminology you want to use when you're playing a video game either way what i really enjoyed about it was it's sort of introducing me to so many things that i could have just really never seen if you were a, a, a fucking 12 year old kid in, in idaho you know, you will not be privy to the goings on of the fucking Haitian mafia. You know, it's 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 kind of cool growing up in a place where it's like, yeah, OK, you could probably say that some of the things I experienced in my life would be a negative. But at the same time, they were negatives that kind of uh, prepared me in my life for things that I might see and uh, gave me a, a sort of safe venue where I could experience really fucked up things and prepare myself for them in the future, potentially. And that's why everybody should live in Florida. And I said multicultural, cultural, which is even worse than multicultural. culture. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I get so easily tongue-tied. It's insane. Okay, so I have to make it to the to garden. And we're sort of running out of time. And I don't remember where it is. Oh, fuck. Okay, I can't solve this right now. I Literally, I would have to know. I can solve this right now. <laughs> I have the fucking... I have the solutions right here. All right. Um, okay. We have a time limit. Okay. Yes. Can I... Can I press it? Let me do it. Oh, I have to take this, maybe. No, we don't take it. Because then, yeah, I get crushed. That's right. Okay. Touch this one first. Oh, my God. We're going to die. Fuck. What's your favorite open world game? It's not necessarily open world, but I'd probably say Stalker. It's close enough. Random hot tank, Dragon Ball's better than One Piece. I think I agree with that. Oh, touch it. Okay, yes. So we got that. What's number two? This one over here. God, we are in such a fucking hurry. Number three down here. Mulching culture. Little bee booty. Number four. My wife used to have a folder on her computer of bees and their butts leaning out of flowers. She, she loved bee booties for some reason. So that's five. What's six? Six is over here. Seven down here. Oh my god. This is fucked. It'd be nice if I just died from this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what I can do. Okay, wait, wait. I know what I can do. Fuck. I might not have enough time to do it, though. Shit. Okay, this is going to be tense. This is going to be tense. Fuck, 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 fuck. I do not know if I have enough room or enough time to do this, but there's only one way to find out. Oh, no. I didn't mean to go this way. Yes, I did, actually. 
Okay. No, no, no. We're doing... We're fine. Fuck, one minute. I'm gonna zombify. Shit. Come on. They know exactly where I need to be, and they're keeping... Okay, okay, okay. This is it. Okay, this is where I need to be. We're going to be fine. We will be fine. The veins are appearing on our eyes. You know, I asked everybody what their fucking critiques were, and I didn't even look at them. Hold on. Let me go look through. I want to see if anybody answered the critique thing, because I'm interested. I'm interested in this. Uh, dun, dun. Did I ever drink Cuban coffee, son? I was raised on Cuban coffee. That's why I'm fucking obsessed with energy drinks today. Because I need to have six of them to get a fucking... A single Cuban coffee in me. Okay, here we go. This is good. Crispy Ash says, I love your vids, but sometimes you go on tangents that repeat info a lot. Just a bit of structure could help, but I love the personality. Okay. I think the reason why that probably happens is when I type up my scripts, I sort of do it um, in a uh, stream of consciousness way. And a lot of times I can forget whether or not I've already talked about something, but that's good. Okay, that's solid. That's what I'm looking for. Um, more in more in-depth stuff adjacent to RE, but that are there contemporaries like deep fear okay i'm already uh, working on that so that's good not bald enough working on that <laughs> i think in 10 years come back and we'll be good change your soothing voice that angers me how about now let's make this a uh no i have to whisper we're going to make it an asmr this is asmr i say the n-word to you while you go to sleep How's the weather in China right now? Is Pooh Bear treating me well? It's cold as fuck here right now. The only reason my room is warm is because my computer is hot. Um, what else we got? Okay, so I really like the vids. So for a complaint, I'd have to nitpick and say tighter scripts or less repeating words so close together. Yes, yes, good, yes. That is something I'm, I am aware of, but for sure. Less in the future. Jared's the most rational person to ever come out of my <laughs> Hold up. That's a... That's a quote, for sure. <laughs> we're, we're clipping that. I'm, I'm gonna put that on my fucking tombstone. Where are we at? Where did I, I found... Okay, here we go. That's getting saved to the desktop, boys. God of War is overrated. I actually, I kind of agree with that, yeah. All right, what else what does everybody else have? Industry, California, random hot take. All right, got that. Cradobis says, hello, Jared. Will you be making something about Alan Wake 2? I will. I have about a terabyte of captured footage of Alan Wake 2, so it's going to be... I'm going to talk a lot. <laughs> It'll be good, don't worry. What's this? My favorite bald badass is streaming at an American-friendly hour. Ooh. What's up, Daniel Delgado? How you doing? Mm. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to change to a more reasonable stream schedule. My wife got on to me. She says I need to stream more often. And it's true. I really do. I just, man, I get to this point where I look at streaming the same way I do as like social interaction. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> but um, but that's, that's how it is. That's one of my biggest problems. And I think... I think it's social anxiety because I end up building up these situations like going out to meet a friend or something. I, I end up building it up in my head and, and it's like, dude, this is going to be fucking awful. You know, 
like this is going to be the worst and it's always fine i always end up having a good time but it's it's just like a like a like a sickness you know what i mean like you just fucking can't help but have these subconscious oh fuck i forgot about this puzzle i'm going to have to look this one up piano puzzles are always so hard yeah anyways i just i it's it's the anticipation that gets me it's the anxiety you know that's what fucks me up about social interactions but you know what fucking sucks man is i i never used to be this way i've always been a really social guy so like ah, it's, it's, it's really strange for me to just like all of a sudden be out of nowhere kind of weird like that but you should try and stream once a week yeah that's that's for sure the goal I was thinking maybe like, I don't know, maybe twice a week. That feels, once a week seems like not enough. I mean, I'm not trying to like, sometimes I have to get real with myself and it's like, you know, at the end of the day, Jared, you're a fucking content creator. You don't work a real job. Like you need to stop thinking things are work that aren't, you know, so I'm trying to get myself out of that mentality. Yeah, there's a fucking, I forget where the, this is interesting. So my second time through, I actually can't find the fucking lock pick. This is fun, actually. I have to go to the garden, but I forget. Oh, wait. I'm going to have to do the piano puzzle. God damn it. Okay, fine. Stream thrice a week. I want to meet someone who genuinely uses the word thrice in actual conversation. That's true. Honestly, that's a big part of it is genuinely just fucking getting old. Someone needs to stop this guy. God damn it. I fucking hate having to fucking do this. You're an asshole for making me do this, whoever you are. Fucking annoying as shit. You know what? <laughs> I'll get in <never> <laughs> I was actually going to make him a moderator and see what happened. <laughs> um, if I hide him, will it hide him for you guys or for, let's see. Let's put you in timeout. Let's see if it continues. I've never actually banned anybody from the channel before. This is going to be new. I'm, it's in... It's not the most important job, Casp. I mean, it's up there, though. I wouldn't say it's above president, but somewhere around, I don't know. I don't know. CEO, maybe? I think Miami looks slightly better beach-wise. I like Miami more, but I'm biased, so who fucking knows? Balance restored. I've never had to do that before, and now I feel bad. That's my first time. Okay, so how do we do the piano puzzle? I mean, because this game really and truly was kind of made for you to sequence break it. I did that. I got a canvas. Okay, so that is where I get the angel mask. Okay. Well, how do I fucking do this then? Ballroom, parlor room, organ puzzle. Here we go. It's in the fire? Fuck. Okay, hold up. Where's Oswald's study? I think it's in the basement. I might be wrong though. Yeah. Let's go to the basement. Play Moonlight Sonata. Um, okay, so basement one. I didn't mean to do that. 
That's not. I have more maps than that, right? Am I crazy? All right, well, let's go to the basement. Who cares? Turned 30 and social anxiety went through the roof. As a girl, I feel like I've aged in dog years. I'm ready for that hermit life. No, really and truly, that's that's how it happened. I've, and I'm still a social guy. Like, I still value socializing. But it's just before I do it, I get like this fucking wicked ass anxiety. That's so wild how that happens. Maybe it's as you get older, you hang out with your friends less because of like obligations and jobs. And then it like de-socialize it? I don't know. Okay, we gotta find his workshop. My stories, dungeon pit, and torture chamber, generator room. Okay, that's not it. Oh shit, Alex guy's a Florida dude. Fuck yeah. I used to go to Tampa for hardcore shows all the time. <clears throat> <coughs> we made fun of that place to no end <coughs> okay so maybe I haven't unlocked it yet I need the servant's key okay so what I have to do right now how am I lost I just beat this game like one day ago <coughs> Die here tonight. Let's say get to the garden. That's what we have to do. Oh, fuck. There's multiple endings. Shit, I'm going to have to play this game multiple times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got that one. Oh, fuck. There's a... There are so many endings to this game. Fuck. Holy shit, this is crazy. Okay. Wow. The way that I beat the game doesn't seem to be... Huh. That's cool. Okay. I just want to know how to get to the fucking garden. That's all. This will help. You guys like watching a static screen as I scroll through YouTube videos? I hope so. Please, I need this guy to show me where to go now. Fuck. What does this give him? Well, I don't know what to fucking do now. Eighteen to twenty-four is our key demo. That was when I was. I don't know. I feel like my life is so much better now, though. But I was way more happy when I was like eighteen to twenty-four. How do I make? I want to show the okay crashing. Man, I have no idea where to go. Let's look for a guide. And then we could just control F garden. I feel like this is the most dead air stream I've ever fucking done before. Cause there's no music coming from the game. Yo, no way. Ah. I never knew that. All right, hold on. Oh, wait, will I have it in my inventory, though? Oh, I don't. Well, we're going to have to fucking restart then. Damn it, that would have been cool. Okay. Let's see. Here. 
that's where the okay I kind of feel better about there being dead air if there's at least music playing There's got to be something I'm missing here. <clears throat> Damn it. Oh. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. Well, at least, okay, I found that. So, fuck it, we'll just do that. Hey, Jared, did they ever catch that serial killer in Miami that seemingly always killed other criminals? Wait, wasn't that fucking... <laughs> wasn't that that one... Fuck, what was the name of that show? I forgot it completely. Damn it, I can't think about it. Fuck. Was it his name? I don't remember at all. I didn't mean to do that. Jared and Joe gave me a Roboco coin purse in Japan, and it was a, that's true. We did do that. Okay. I'm going to have to figure out music theory right now. Hold on. Here. And then. And then. No. That was not it at all. <laughs> okay. Let's, we're going to have to count. Okay, so this is not right. <laughs> Fuck. That's easy enough. Okay, okay, okay. I've got I've got it, I've got it. That's three. Four is over here. And then five is right here. And that did nothing. Fucking life is a sham. Fuck. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Oh, wait, I probably won't be able to do it until I get the sheet music anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, fine. I give up. Dexter, that was it, Dexter, okay. Honestly, I watched Dexter with a buddy. Didn't really get into it too much. Not really my my thing. Watched a lot of Dexter on Acid and loved it. I imagine pretty much any show on Acid is probably going to be at the very least improved. All right. Maybe we go through our archive a little bit. What do we have here? I know that. Okay, we don't have...
have any information that could help us right now. We wasted like four hours on the piano. We did. I mean, you did. I didn't. My time can't be wasted. It's physically impossible. If a woman will play... Whoa, I just plosipped my mic hard. If a woman will play three rounds of borrow trauma with you, she's wife... What is borrow trauma? Borrow trauma. That doesn't sound familiar. I think now I can go down and solve the chessboard, though. <laughs> Massive organ. Croc Master McGeezax says, This game looks pretty awesome. Is it awesome? It is. It's about as awesome as it looks, actually, which is kind of dope. I think I can solve this now. No, maybe not with him because he's kind of an idiot. Maybe that's what it is. <sighs> Michael C. Hall is a good actor. What has he played? That name sounds familiar, but I, I'm not putting a face to it. Michael C. Hall. Fuck, church, don't talk about eating. I'm so hungry. Okay, I got the brooch from here, right? Yeah. So that's good. Oh, that's the guy. He's Dexter. Okay. I don't know that I've seen him in anything else before. Are we looking at the fire coming out? Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him in anything other than Dexter. He plays Dee Dee. Dee Dee who? Dee Dee Ramon? He was in Six Feet Under. Man, I vaguely remember Six Feet Under. I remember um, the actress from Six Feet Under had like a nude scene or something. She had a really small butt. That's what I remember about the show Six Feet Under is her small butt. Oh no, not Six Feet Under. What's the one where it's the chick who starts selling weed? That's not Six Feet Under. That's something else. Fuck, what was that called? I always had a problem with the show Six Feet Under because I listened to the band Six Feet Under and anytime I would look for their music videos, I would find shit from that show. Is there a fucking... No? Okay. So I guess it's the main hall where the music's coming from? Okay, I can't go to the main hall there. Stairwell East. Huh. Weeds? Okay, I fucking should have thought of that on my own. <laughs> Fuck. I feel dumb. Oh. Well, if you would have went that way, you fucking idiot. I'm so stupid. All that time I spent running around like a fool because I didn't check one door. Every time. Yeah, I really don't remember weeds enough to say anything about it. Other than that small butt part. I remember that like it's fucking back of my hand. Weebs. <laughs> I'm starting that. You gotta love when you come across a really catchy tune.
A house mom that sells pot versus a chemistry teacher that sells meth. It does seem like the industry has kind of been repeating the same formula over and over again. Someone you normally wouldn't associate with crime does crime. Hey Jared, ever consider releasing content about uh, music you like in the form of YouTube shorts? Um, honestly, I would love to, but making musical content on YouTube is so fucking hard, dude, because of copyright. <laughs> Such a good quote. Fuck yeah, dude, this dude rules. Yo, the head just left. Oh no, it's because he's wearing a mask, that's right. Who's the bigger fool? The fool or the fool that follows him? Whoever you are in the situation, that's always the bigger one. <laughs> Me, I'm always the lesser of the fools, no matter what the analogy is. Was it so offensively small? The Lord taketh, I guess. For me, I'm used to a little higher quality. Didn't turn anything. Yeah, I don't really have anything. I think you have to like crank it or something, maybe. Perhaps like that soldier boy. Do I like Mill Sims? Um, I don't know that I've ever actually really given one a chance. I usually like really realistic shooting mechanics in my like traditional video games. So I imagine I probably would enjoy a Mill Sim. I mean, I play Stalker and Stalker, um, you know, having to. <clears throat> Having to select different fire modes and clear jams and needing to use like bandages to stop bleeding. It kind of approaches, you know, that, that mill sim territory to a degree. What did I just get? I got the mask, so we'll go up and use that. Breaking Bad was perfect. I liked it a lot, but you know what's fucked up? I got to the very end of it and stopped like five episodes before at the final season. And I never picked it back up. Just something was going on in my life. I was just kind of busy or, you know, something came up. And now it's been so long. There's just like no point in picking it back up again. I just never finished it. The unlocking sound effect that plays in this game is recorded so well and it sounds so realistic and it's so high in the mix that when I wear headphones, it sounds like someone is unlocking my door behind me. It sounds like I can spin those statues now and I should read the rap song at the bottom of this thing. <laughs> Fuck. That's amazing. <laughs> The fucking rap song indeed, my friend. And if you're wondering, yes, I am cheating and finding the solution real quick. Okay, so the Cerberus. Didn't mean to do that. There. And then who's next? The Raven. Demon. And then Lucifer is left. You know what's weird? I accidentally solved this puzzle when I first tried it. It seems like it'd be kind of hard to randomly solve, but I totally fucking did it. This doesn't make sense. Technically, you shouldn't be able to get to me. That's one thing I don't like. It should automatically reload my gun when I get out of battle. The only thing that's really great about BB is Brian Cranston. Really? I thought it was pretty good. 
Damn it. I was trying to get him like right on the fucking. What well, would you look at that? An apparition. I really like the atmosphere in this game. You could really creep yourself out here. Oh shit, he was untimed out. And he came right, I I will say I respect the dedication. I wonder if he comes back a second time. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, the only mod that I have in chat is... Well, I have... T Benny's a mod. Um, and my wife. And then one other person. Cameron Culligan, yeah. But those are the only mods I have. I don't know. I don't like the idea of mods. It's like... I mean, yes, it's annoying that that guy's fucking spamming the N-word in chat, but realistically you know it's not fucking hurting anybody and who gives a shit he'll wear himself out eventually you know <laughs> this is such a quotable fucking game this is so good Ugh. hold up this is the this is the can I get a screenshot of you, perhaps? Really? No? What the fuck? I wonder if the screenshot thing from Windows will work on a game. Let's find out. Oh, it totally will. Hell yeah. That's the quote for today. Alright, boys, just try to live your life this way. I feel like you should be able to break that, but maybe one of these. Guess not. I prefer bird law. Well, you know, it doesn't really follow reason or logic, so. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Thought I was alone. That's one thing I really like. If you enter combat while other zombies are around, um, it'll bring them into the fight, which is super cool. I'm going to name my son Eric Downs. You should. He'll never be made fun of at school, for sure. Isn't that Guinevere's couch? Who's Guinevere? Hmm, and various other loreings, of course. Damn, we're having a fucking TV show war in the chat. I'm not going to say anything. I want to see what what determination the chat comes to on its own. That's a gross noise. Ew. Why do you look so gross? <laughs> I fucking love this guy. There's no real war. Jonathan has no real opinion. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's getting worse. They're going after each other's throats. All right, so what do we have to do here? Oh, 
I know what to do with this. Hell yeah. Okay, I know what puzzle we have to do next. Fuck yeah. I'm excited. Which side's losing? I'll join that one. You always do that. <clears throat> I love the dumb guys named Downs. They knew what they were doing. I'm a fucking math. Why do I keep aiming at the same spot in the upper right hand corner? That's really weird. Jared, what would your three desert island shows be? Oh, okay. This is a tough one. Three desert island shows. <clears throat> oh, gross. Ew. Ew, they have little noises when their fucking little feet move. Grody. Okay, so number one, as far as TV shows go. This is tough, dude. Fuck, don't do this to me. Hmm. Damn. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm going to need a refresher. Let me, I, I have all of my media on my network attached storage. Let's see what shows I have in there. Let's see what I watch. Are we talking live action or anime? Cause this is going to make it a, a much more like if we're talking all together, it's going to be tough. Majiska Gakuen probably. Yeah. Majiska Gakuen's in there. Probably at number three, the lowest one. But the entire series I love, so I could watch that over and over again. Um, American Dad is really funny, and it's one of those shows that I can turn on, and my brain can just shut off, and it could just play, and then every once in a while there's a really funny joke. Like, every show, there's, like, two really good jokes, and then my brain can just, like, be on autopilot the whole time. So that, and <clears throat> uh, this Japanese show called... Um, Igibukuro, Westgate Park. Probably those three. Anime is a TV show. It's an animated TV show. If I beat the whole game with downs, I'm going to be pissed. Loss had to be number one on the island. You know, thematically, that would make a lot of sense. That probably would have been a good choice. <laughs> I didn't really get into Loss too much. Loss kind of felt like it was up its own ass really hard. This is going to be very controversial, I think. Oh, shit, Ernesto Thompson. What's up, man? Bro, 23 months. I love you. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate you re-upping. Supporting the shit out of me, man. Thank you. Um, What was I talking about before? Oh, Lost. Yeah, I. This is this might not be a popular take, especially because I love Lynch as much as I do. But I think actually Lynch's biggest problem is that he doesn't understand that it's it's good to make a piece of media so thought provoking that the viewer has formed their own sort of opinion on it and has interpreted the story in a way differently than than you've made and that's good but there has to be like events <laughs> like there needs to be something actually has to concretely take place in in the the movie the tv show the property whatever and lost uh the guy who made lost the writer people are like, yeah so what happened in lost what do you think happened it's like no fuck you you're a writer you have a job and your entire job is to create a story and it's good if people 
sort of get more out of that story than you put into it or are able to sort of read between the lines and, and kind of see hints that you might have put out. And that's great. I'm happy for that. But like you do have to actually write a finished story with the beginning, middle and end as well. You can't hide behind this idea of I'm so artistic that my art can't have any meaning for you because it can only mean something to me. It's like, yeah, I fucking took existentialism in college as well. I'm just not a fucking pompous piece of shit about it. Um, my wife wanted to start watching Ozark recently. I really like the guy in it. He was in uh, Friday Night Lights. Fuck, there's another good show right there. Me and my buddy watched the shit out of Friday Night Lights back in the day. Twin Peaks is peak. That is true. I like it a lot. But what I don't like about Twin Peaks is this idea that, you know, Twin Peaks has no... And it's, you know what it is, honestly? It probably stems from all of my experiences with Silent Hill fans. But it's like this idea that Twin Peaks doesn't technically have a story per se. It's just whatever you think it is, you know? What do you think happened? And it's like, I didn't fucking watch your movie to find out what I think happened. Or your show, or whatever your property is. I mean, I guess it's one thing if you go into it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to leave all this shit out. I'm going to like introduce plot points and then not explain them and then leave it up to the player, figure things out. I like, OK, if that's your approach, fine. But there there needs to be a balance of actual story content and things that I think are story content. You can't have me doing the entirety of the work. That's why I can't play um, like tabletop role playing games. Like, my imagination is so bad. I need... You have to tell me what's going on. I need to... I need to see it physically in the world, represented. Fuck off. I shot your thing. All right, motherfucker. I do not like how long that took. Oh, that's a courtyard. Why did I do that? I don't want to read between the lines. That's why I'm watching a TV show. I don't want to read, motherfucker. Never make me read. Ever. That's all mocked. Ooh, I know what we can do now. If, if I am made to read, I will be unhappy. It's the law of the universe. Why do I keep trying to lock doors? I'm so stupid. Lost wasn't supposed to run as long as it did, but the studio asked for the show not to end. Interesting. I didn't know that. Huh. Hey, Sophia Narwitz. What's up? How you doing? Thank you very much for the 10 bucks. You have 15 seconds to review Alien Isolation. That's going to be easy. I never played Alien Isolation. The end. Boosh. Nailed it. Um, chat talked me into buying it a while ago and I, I really do plan on playing it, but I've literally never gotten around to it. A buddy of mine, um, under the Mayo has a controversial opinion. He thinks that game's kind of ass. So he has me looking forward to playing it and seeing how wrong everybody is about it, but I could love it. You never know. Mystery Science Theater 3000. God, what a fucking show. You remember the movie? I remember when the movie came out, it was like a big fucking deal for me. I was like, yo, this is legitimizing MSD3K. It's in the mainstream now. <clears throat> Twin Peaks should be seen at least twice. You know what? I, I, I really, I, I kind of don't like... Um, things that require repeat viewings. I sort of enjoy repeat viewings, but I don't, I don't want to be required um, to repeat view in order to like get a, a necessary portion of the story, or you know what I mean. Repeat views are good if you get something extra, but 
I don't know. It's just a Lynchian thing. I just, I, I hate creators who think they don't have to explain themselves. It's like, yes, you do 100% have to explain yourself. Aegis 7 says Mayo sucks. Oh, fuck. I wonder what you like about him. I'd be interested to see. Let's see. What, what's your, your criticisms? Everybody, since we did the criticisms of my channel, let's do the criticisms of Under the Mayos. He is my buddy, though, so please be re relatively respectful, at least. X-Files was good for the first five or six seasons. You know, X-Files is one of those shows that could always just turn on and have a good random episode. Um, but I never actually, like, followed, like, the X-Files story. I remember when the movie came out, they had Scully, who had been impregnated, I guess, at some point during the show with, like, an alien fetus. And I had no idea that that had happened. So I was fucking behind oh fuck yeah fringe me and my wife used to love that show so interestingly when we were talking about potentially having kids we really liked olivia in fringe and we wanted to call her olive we are if we ever had a daughter we would call her olive or olivia because that's such a cute name and that's such a cute nickname so fringe if i ever have a kid might be responsible for its name <clears throat> What a good show, though. Man, that one episode where, like, that guy had that weird particle introduced to his skin. His skin kept growing, like, rapidly without stopping. And it would cover up his, like, mouth holes and his nostrils and shit. Oh, fuck. I'm going to get damaged. Nope. That was fucking scary as shit. The idea that, like, your eyes could just close up and your mouth hole stops opening. <laughs> I like Fringe more than X-Files purely because the central plot is more cohesive and the series doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. It, it sort of just does exactly what it should do and nothing more. I really got into that film noir episode, though. That, that like, spin-off episode. So good. I really liked when we finally got to go into, that, like, the other world, the other dimensions version of earth and see how like every time one of those little hole holes opens up in like space time they put amber around it like that's so fucking sick fringe was so dope horns before ears skin before shears sticks before spears horns before ears One more time. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mustard's better than mayo? I agree. I don't like mayo at all. He simps for Doom Eternal too hard. Yeah, fair enough. He does love that game. Makes sense. Okay. So, horns before ears. So, I guess all the ones with horns first. And then skin before shears. So, the rhino goes first. Sticks before spears. Sticks before spears. What are the sticks? Do you think that's the the moose thing? What is that called? What are you? Yeah, it is a moose. Okay. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. It's the little show that could have given, um, that could given just how often, wait, it's the little show that could given just how often it avoided cancellation. Only the final season is iffy due to being rushed. You know, actually, I don't think I ever finished Fringe, actually. I think the last, the last I, I stopped watching is when Olivia made it over to the other world, met the other world version of her partner. And like that whole controversy took place and she had to like find her way back to her world. I think that's might have been around the last spot that I watched. Maybe. I'm not sure. 
What do you think I'm gonna do with him? Huh? Fuck that railing. All right. I have an idea of the order of these heads. Let's see if I'm right. I'm looking up every single fucking solution of these puzzles. I swear I didn't need to the first time. All right, where are the, the heads? Oh, fuck. I was totally right. It was. It was Moose Rhino and then the other two. I'm so fucking smart. How long have we been streaming for? What is this? Where's my time? It doesn't fucking tell me. How about up here? Hey, almost three hours. That's a good amount of time. No, don't do that. I like it when I've streamed long enough that when I end, I don't feel bad about not streaming it. Okay, so now I think my head cannon is... Can't be helped. I'm too smart. I <laughs> didn't finish French. I haven't played Alien Isolation. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm a hard man to love. <laughs> it's, I make it tough. <clears throat> yeah, you can really see that stutteriness right here for some reason. I want to DM the developers see if maybe they have a. I just want to know why. That's it. I'm just fucking so curious. Okay, so we have these. We need to go downstairs. Bunch of shit we can open down there. Alright. All unlocked. Where's that other section? We just went through there. Yes, yes, yes. Oh wait, we still haven't. This was it was right here. I'm so stupid. Okay, I think this is. I can use the servant's key here. Yeah. Do I watch The Walking Dead? I do, and it's pretty okay, but it's also pretty terrible too. I just, you know, I'm such a big fucking fan of like zombie media. That like The Walking Dead, even when it got really bad. And it did get really bad. It still didn't fully ruin the experience, you know. But it did become incredibly formulaic. And you could tell the, the budget really dried up towards the end. Why did I get that? That's dope. Okay, I already have all my weapons. Nice. Good to see. Healing items. Don't mind if I don't. I never knew Josh Whedon created Buffy. Really? That's like his big thing. Fuck, it's a way better quote than before. <laughs> fucking quiz. I he's the coolest fucking character. I don't know if even the developers that made this game have any idea what they have on their hands here. It's too good. Walking Dead peaked in episode one for me. Amazing start, but downhill from there. Um, I bailed on the show around season four. Yeah, I could see season four being pretty easy to fucking dip out on. Episode one really did a great job of setting things up. Episode two, I think, probably I liked more than episode one, though. I mean, you know, really and truly, the problem is, is you just can't... That premise can't last too too long. You know what I mean? Like it like you can get some fucking legs out of that, but eventually it's it's gonna become weird. 
that people keep getting bitten by zombies because like at some point you'd have to expect that they'd become experts at like checking dark corners and rooms before they enter them. Oh shit, the dude's back. Honestly, I respect his fucking the hustle. This guy really has a determination that I lack, honestly. Have you seen From? It's a good horror-esque thriller, From. I don't think so, no. I think The Walking Dead did a good job of really setting up its characters early on, like its core cast. And I, I kind of really, like, I like those characters a lot, and some of them are still around in the show, and that's basically what keeps me around. Walking Dead got repetitive, and the plot tis, plot twist uh, was just the crew going from safe haven to safe haven. Oh, the plot was just... Okay. I mean, yeah. But if you're like me, and you kind of like the idea... Like, the zombie apocalypse is like a fun thing to sort of, like, think about happening in some kind of a way. You know, each episode gives you an opportunity to sort of role play that zombie apocalypse scenario it has its value it's just like it also kind of sucks too and there's no unlocked doors oh there is one in the basement how do i get to there basement one basement one oh well i got so tired of stealth zombies in a quiet dark place with creatures that shamble and moan oh no it got behind me somehow without me hearing it and now i'm bit yeah that always got to me it's just like you you could you could see physically the writer straining to introduce conflict into the story when shit like that happens you know oh you know what could you guys do me a favor i never i i forget to ask for this every time could you if you're watching it could you like the stream too to spread it around since i stopped streaming um it's been harder to get uh, YouTube to promote these. Third floor, yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Doesn't gas go bad after a few years, like two or three? How are they driving my immersion shattered? Um, if it's in a, like a non-vacuum sealed uh, like container, it can break down really easily with oxygen. So yeah, after like two or so years of a car just sitting there, the gas wouldn't work anymore. It would have um, uh, like dissolved down in the sludge. But if you were able to find gas underground, like at gas stations and, and depots and stuff like that, you could still use it. Oh, I have both the brooches now. Yeah, yeah, we can go that way. Is that the thumb point? Yes, yes, it is. If everybody please could dislike and unsubscribe from this channel while I stream please. oh yeah that's another thing I don't know if you guys saw this on Twitter yeah every time I stream I lose three subscribers on average it's very strange I don't know what it is I mean it's like it's not enough for for me to get like really upset about but it, it's it's almost it's so little that it's insulting <laughs> if 10,000 of you left that would be one thing but it, like three it's like what the fuck Got to go now. Have a good one. Yeah, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. Next time, come back and we'll see if I've played one of the games that you like. Probably haven't. <clears throat> see, I told you if we, I, I, I fucking told you if we ignored him, he would go away. I, I knew it. That's why I didn't uh, time him out again. I was like, listen, if we ignore him, he's just going to fucking leave. And he did. Okay. Over here. That's where we have to go.
Ross with the knowledge. Who's... Oh, Ross. Well, gas can go bad in a matter of... Mo oh, months, really. Though with a good stabilizer, it can last several years. Interesting. There you go, Ross. Let these fools know. Jared, I'm sure you've been asking this a ton, but ask this a ton. But did you see Cabas 22 on uh, Ross's game dungeon? Yeah, that's that. Um, Christ, Serbian game or something, right? Yeah. You know, it looked interesting, and I wanted like I still do want to put it in, on the RE clone series, but um, it also looks really bad, and that sucks. Like I wanted it to be kind of like a, a hidden gem and not like a really shitty game. <laughs> Honestly, you're like the 20th tuber who says that phantom sub loss. Well, it's 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 only when I stream. It's really weird. Potentially, it could be um, just YouTube getting rid of, you know, like bot subs and stuff. That could be it, but I don't know. It, it's weird that it only happens when I stream. What it seems like to me is potentially people are just saying like, well, I subscribe to this channel for like, you know, three hour long deep dives talking about upscaling and shit and not necessarily for streaming. So I'm not going to watch this. That's what I imagine is, is happening. Jared, if there's a Code Veronica remake, what aspect do you want the game to expand on? Uh, really? I, I just, I want to see the perspective make it through the sort of fixed uh, perspective where the camera can follow you once you reach certain points. I mean, that would be nice. I'm not so dumb to think that they would genuinely create a Resident Evil game with a fixed perspective again. But, you know, if if, if I had my, my say. Ew. This is fucking gross. It's so little that it's insult. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> at least get like all your friends to unsubscribe as well. I've been unsubbed from four to really. So maybe YouTube is just like working some very aggressive like bot scrubbing tactics or something. Shinobido sounds like a porn game. <laughs> it does. You're not wrong. Fucking gross. Fuck, I was supposed to. Oh, no, no, no. No, don't kill me. Oh, shit. Fuck. God, that was so fucking close. Yo, never fuck with me. There we go. Fucking blast him. Go ahead, charge it up, fool. Oh, fuck. Switched it up on me. Oh, I found you. Fuck. That's not good. That's not good. That was supposed to knock you out. Oh, I'm so mad about that. Fuck. And I'm already over it. That's how fast it was.
Honestly, Ross Wolf, that's essentially, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I haven't said it yet, but I will probably in the next few weeks. Hey, Macy Agurta, it's been a while. How you doing, man? It'd be interesting if they touched on the Ashford family history they scrapped for the original CV ideas about them being uh, Nazi deserters. To me, it's squeeze, uh, it's squeeze some intrigue. I'd like to see that, yeah. So I, I kind of want to beat the game, but I kind of also want to let everybody die and then restart as a. Uh, Olsen, because I like her better, but... Oh, well. Hello, Jared. Nice to see you back on tube. What's the next retrospective plan? Daily Nice Lives. <laughs> um, I don't know about the next, like, retrospective. I have the Remedy thing going on right now and this is going to sound so stupid but I've been kind of what's the word disillusioned with that project because when I released um the first video in it which which was like Alan Wake man it got like no fucking views like substantially lower than typically what I would normally see even if the views were really bad the views were so bad that it was like YouTube somehow like fucked up kind of bad. You know what I mean? Like I got like 10,000 views on a fucking two hour video or something or, or something ridiculous like that. And it's kind of has me like not looking forward to working on that retrospective anymore because people don't seem to really like it all that much. We lost him, boys. We lost Downs. <laughs> Look, he fucking tied up. Oh, you could see his little fucking skeleton face coming out. Oh, his health didn't regen. That's nice. Well, at least we can get all of our resources. Dumb kid. <clears throat> Were you planning a separate Ways DLC video? Uh, maybe at some point, to be honest with you. I don't have like a lot of desire to really even play it right now. Um, that could change in the future, but like, man, I'm just, I don't know. When I was finished with Resident Evil 4, I was kind of finished with Resident Evil 4, the remake. Um, I, like, I don't really have like a, a, a desire to go back and play it really. So the Separate Ways DLC really just like didn't do much for me. I don't think I did that last time. Okay, it opened a hidden door somewhere. Syndrome of a Downs. Anybody here like System of a Down? I like that first album and really and truly I can't stand much else. And that first album is like back to back bangers though. Honestly, I think the algorithm just fucked you because people were milking the Alan Wake 2 hype by making Alan Wake videos uh, for easy views. So this makes no Exactly, exactly. It, it really does make no sense. I had seen people doing it. So like I had seen them getting really good views and, um, you know, it doesn't like it. You don't want to be a fucking asshole. But it's like, oh, come on. What's the fucking <laughs> what do they got that I don't got? How come they got the views? Ooh. Yeah, I, I haven't been in here before. 
I don't think I ever found that. Maybe? Maybe this is where the spider retreated to. Give it a try. It's a real good DLC. All right. I mean, people do... I haven't heard any negative opinions on it, so it seems like people really do get into it. But it's just like... I, I having trouble working up the like drive to start a game of Resident Evil 4 again. I dig them a lot. I'm a sucker for melodic metal. <clears throat> Who's someone that's really good? That's kind of... It's really hard finding a band that's kind of adjacent to System of a Down. They're so strange. Okay, maybe I, I have been up here, though, because you have to kill him to get that key, right? Maybe it's just the head. That's the issue. There we go. That stops him from doing anything. Oh, you gotta reload each fucking round. Uh-oh. Easy enough. Shit. I hear you. Oh, fucking got you. All right. Yeah. Fuck. I did it again. See what you do, you bait out. And that's when you do it. Did I get him? Oh fuck, he got his little babies on me. That's alright, I'll just fucking mash out. That is not a good spider. There's no such thing as a good spider. Oh fuck, he's no way. Oh, what did. Why did he come back? Fuck. I'm dead. Damn it. Well, you know what, guys? I'm hungry. I'm going to go get some food. We did die here tonight. The title was correct. The game has defeated us. I'm going to alt tab. Uh, you know what? Let's just uh, do this. All right, guys. I'm going to head out of here. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. I'm going to try, like I said, to make these streams a more regular thing. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll just beat this game, right? No, not corn. I love corn. I really do. I actually love corn a lot. All right, guys. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. Thank you so much if you super chatted or subscribed, joined up as a channel member, or liked the stream, or whatever you did. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. I will talk to all of you tomorrow. Make wise choices. Don't drive drunk. And take one thing that you eat, drink, or use too much today and take the first step into weaning yourself off of it. That's the goal. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. I'll talk to you all later.